Hello everyone, welcome to a new series. This one is something I've been thinking about doing for quite a while. And I call this Flying Your Way Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. So what's the whole idea behind this? The idea behind this is pretty simple. A lot of people are more visual learners. And I think that... In I'm not saying don't read this book, of course, but I think a lot of people, if they can see what's going on, it makes things a lot easier for them. So I'm going to try to combine some of the text from the Helicopter Flying Handbook with some simulations in X-Plane, and hopefully that will help you kind of understand the material a little bit better. So this is, video is about chapter one, which is pretty short. It's just an introduction to the helicopter. And they go through a little bit of history. You know, early on, we didn't have turbine engines in the helicopters. You know, some of the training helicopters you might be flying still do not have turbine engines, which is perfectly fine. How does this work? You know, what's a helicopter? You know, they talk about history, and then they talk about different kinds of rotor systems. So here you can see a Chinook. Chinook is probably familiar to many of you. It's a CH-47. And it has a dual rotor configuration. So that is one of the possible configurations. It is not by far the most popular, but it certainly is a configuration that you might see. Okay, and here is a much more common configuration. This is a Schweitzer S300 CBI, which is an excellent training helicopter. It's actually one that I do quite a bit of training in. And it has a more traditional single rotor. And then, of course, it has to have a tail rotor because if you don't have two rotors, that are opposing each other, you're going to have some torque. And this thing will like to spin in a circle, kind of like every helicopter ever, right before it crashes on every movie and TV show that you've seen. So there is, of course, another way that you can get around this torque problem, and that's to have two rotors right on top of each other. And I couldn't seem to find a version of that in X-Plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's move inside our helicopter. So if I look inside the helicopter, you're gonna see my instrument clusters, and I'm also gonna see some of my flight controls. So this that I'm moving here, this is called the cyclic. So what does it do? It essentially tilts that rotor disc. So if I push forward, it tilts, the rotor disc forward and the helicopter goes forward. If I pull back, the helicopter will slow down and eventually go backwards as well. If I want to turn to the right, I simply push the cyclic to the right. That tilts the disc to the right. And much like an airplane, this is how you turn a helicopter. An airplane, you tilt the lift to one side or the other. Uh, you do the same thing in a helicopter. You just tilt the lift, and based on that, the helicopter will go one way or another. Now, just like an airplane, when you tilt that lift, you might be flying sort of cockeyed through the air, and that's not considered great. So we have these little pedals here, and these are called anti-torque pedals in the helicopter, and in, in an airplane, they're called rudder pedals. So I might occasionally slip up and refer to these as rudder pedals when they're really not. So just FYI. What do these do? These affect the pitch of that tail rotor in the back. So a traditional American helicopter has a main rotor system that's going to rotate counterclockwise as viewed from above. As a result, helicopters have right turning tendencies. 
airplanes tend to have left turning tendencies. So what does that mean? Well, that what that means is you'll use the rudder pedals, which are called anti-torque pedals here. As you increase power, you have to put in left pedal. As you decrease power, you have to put in right pedal. So as you're flying a helicopter, you'll learn that power up or collective up, we'll talk about that in a second, means left pedal. Power down or collective down means right pedal in order to keep the thing going straight through the air. Other controls right here left, you see this control. This is called the collective. Why is it called that? It's called the collective because it changes the pitch of the main rotor blades collectively or as a unit. And that's why it's called a collective. So you see here, if I raise this, it increases the pitch and it makes the helicopter want to go up. If I lower it, the helicopter is going to go down. So you can think of this kind of as the elevator control for your helicopter. Also here, you'll find the throttle. It's a twist throttle. So I just increase the throttle a little bit and then put it back down. So that is just like a motorcycle. So if you've ever driven a motorcycle, you know that if you twist this way, that's more power. And if you twist the other way, it's less power. And so that is the basic controls of a helicopter. Talk more about this in later videos, but many helicopters have one of two things, sometimes both something called a correlator so that when I pull the collective up, it will advance the throttle. It'll say, hey, you probably needed more power because you're pulling the collective up. And vice versa. If I drop the collective, it will reduce the throttle. There are some helicopters that have a governor, so the governor will automatically control. Here's my tack, and you'll notice it has two needles. The inner needle is the rotor, and the outer needle is the engine. And there are different ranges. This is actually a little bit below my ground range. And then we have our flight range over here. So this outer green arc is where I want to maintain if I'm actually going to go flying. So I'll just throttle up here real quick. And notice that I went a little bit over because this particular helicopter doesn't have a governor. It's an option, but it's not one I've ever seen anyone buy for this helicopter. So as I pull up, I'm going to go back down here to 2000 RPMs. You'll also notice that right here, the needle split. And that's an important thing when we start talking about auto rotations, which we won't talk about today. This is just our quick introduction to this series. So that's it for this video. We will see you in the next one where we will move on to chapter two, which is all about aerodynamics. See you then.